We are talking about uh, emotional well-being products. So I'm going to share uh, really my thoughts on uh, the exciting trends and uh, opportunities in this domain. So first of all, just very briefly, uh, here we go. Okay. So uh, Joint Ventures, uh, we uh, basically, uh, very briefly to introduce us, we build, fund, and support companies that are developing science-backed consumer products that help people experience everyday moments of joy and improve their emotional well-being. Uh, we operate a very unique model, which is built upon three main pillars of uh, activity. Uh, first and foremost, we invest in startup teams and companies that are already developing products. We also run ideation and venture creation programs that bring together uh, some of the most innovative thinkers and entrepreneurs into our domain to explore uh, various new ideas and work on building new ventures from the ground up. And lastly, we collaborate with academia uh, in order to advance research and technology development that can contribute to future uh, product innovation. And as part of that, we run an academic grant program uh, with over a million dollars in annual funding. We've already funded over 30 projects to date. So what are the major areas of emotional well-being that we're super excited about and where we see uh, a lot of uh, activity? Well, what we find really exciting uh, is that we're still in the early days, first of all, of this product category. Uh, and so we're seeing a lot of opportunity for new technologies and new products uh, to come about. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. But some of the technologies that we look at are, for example, uh, non-invasive brain stimulation, uh, mixed reality, which obviously Walter uh, spoke about extensively, emotion recognition, brain sensing, biofeedback, neurofeedback, as well as brain computer interfaces. And these various technologies, and this is not a comprehensive list, can be applied for various uh, aspects related to our emotional well being, such as relaxation, stress reduction, increased resilience, improved cognitive performance, uh, emotional regulation, et cetera. And I know. Walter also mentioned some of those, and I'll talk about them as well in the context even of uh, the recent climate and where we see uh, opportunities for innovation there. Um, the actual, I'll just touch as a, you know, wearing my investor hat, I'll touch also briefly on the market itself because we're seeing really a, a, um, a market that's been steadily growing in the last few years. Uh, and we're definitely seeing that this growth accelerated uh, in the recent months uh, in, during COVID-19. Uh, you can see here some of the huge uh, projections for products that focus on stress management and emotion regulation, $4 billion um, uh, in the mind mindfulness, meditation, and breathing space. And uh, as you can see, um, by 2021, $36 billion market in the emotions and uh, mood detection and regulation space. Uh, I thought that some good examples would come from, uh, I could share from our portfolio. So uh, I think these are uh, nice ways of showing how uh, technology can be applied uh, in consumer, uh, for consumer uh, emotional well being uses. Uh, the first company uh, is called Empathic Technologies, and they've developed a product called Doppel, which is a wristband that creates a heartbeat like, heartbeat -like vibration for uh, reducing stress or inducing focus. Uh, Nix is a uh, company working on a headset that uses that monitors our uh, brain activity through EEG and helps improve our sleep through non-invasive brain stimulation. Reflect is a portable smart textile biofeedback design device that helps you practice relaxation. Sangha is an upcoming upcoming unique uh, meditation app which helps us to um, stick to the meditation habit through a personalized uh, journey. And V is also a personalized uh, coach, uh, helping us uh, basically do our fitness uh, with a voice powered uh, AI. So these are just some examples of the types of technologies and companies that we're excited about uh, in the emotional well-being space. I wanted to now zoom in on a couple of emerging trends and themes that we think will dominate the emotional well-being market uh, because of COVID-19, but also beyond. And even uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic, public health experts were concerned about uh, the epidemic of loneliness 
and the coronavirus has only exacerbated that problem. And Walter mentioned uh, it briefly as well. Um, with you know, recently the um, face-to-face -face socializing for people um, under lockdown, and, and obviously limiting members of people to their own members of households to their uh, you know to their own uh, homes. Uh, and for the over 30 million people that live alone in the U.S., um, that obviously meant no meaningful social uh, contact at all, uh, potentially for months on end. So chronic loneliness has clear links, as I'm sure you all know, uh, clear links to many health problems, including dementia, depression, anxiety, uh, heart conditions, and substance abuse. And there's a lot of focus on loneliness among older ad adults uh, as life expectancies are uh, rising across uh, most populations. However, uh, many studies are showing that other generations such as millennials are also reporting high rates of loneliness. And with more and more adults living alone, this issue is really hitting um, across age, various age demographics. So what are some of the um, exciting tech companies that we're uh, seeing are tackling the issue from different angles? Uh, one company, which is actually uh, based in Israel where we are, uh, is Intuition Robotics, which is a smart and empathetic uh, digital companion robot for older adults um, that offers tips, advice, uh, suggestions, reminders. They even do uh, uh, mindfulness meditation um, with their users and cognitive stimulation games. Uh, to help people, older uh, people, uh, tackle no loneliness. Another company we really love is uh, Wobot, which is an AI-powered chatbot that um, is based on cognitive-based ther behavioral therapy. And it's also like a personal uh, emotional guide or, or a sidekick that checks in with you every day to see how you're doing. And Seven Chairs is a more recent startup that came up in the space that um, offers an online support group that connects people with others that are in similar uh, situations under the guidance of a professional group leader. And this platform is designed uh, to help support anyone dealing with a life crisis such as a death or divorce or even um, anxiety and depression. And some interesting considerations here are that, um, you know, as AI and natural language and emotion detection can continue to advance, uh, we can develop more uh, empathetic, compassionate, you know, naturally sounding digital companions. So we're really excited about that space. And I won't continue, I won't uh, repeat uh, everything that Walter said, obviously about um, the potential for, you know, for mixed reality to also uh, provide great uh, solutions for, uh, for staving off uh, isolation and bringing people together. So uh, this is really a place uh, where we believe there'll be a lot of uh, exciting innovation and opportunities for investment. Uh, the other opportunity, which I wanted to zoom in on related to COVID, but is really something that's been around obviously before COVID and was only brought to a higher awareness uh, in recent months is employee burnout or employee well-being. Uh, we're seeing a lot of conversation about that as it relates to um, improving productivity in a remote work reality as well. Uh, and again, this is an issue we've been facing for a long time, but has only just been brought to the forefront again, uh, most recently uh, due to Corona. Um, but even before Corona, uh, over 60% of uh, employees said that they felt burnt out and in addition to the social consequences, this has tremendous economic impact. Uh, workplace stress is estimated to cost the U.S. over $500 billion uh, and 550 million workdays on an annual basis. So we're seeing that from all the way from the larger tech companies to you know the, the traditional industry players, many companies are looking for solutions to address this issue. So what are some of the uh, examples of companies that we're seeing? Uh, for example, we have a human charger, which is a bright light therapy headset device. And um, it has LEDs and earbuds that shine a light in the ear. Uh, and that reaches and stimulates the brain. So uh, it supposedly triggers a release of uh, neurotransmitters and improves uh, mood, energy, and uh, alertness, and also reduces uh, jet lag effects. Uh, I've also mentioned Doppel before that um, they also use uh, tactile uh, rhythms, vibrations to uh, reduce stress and increase calm. 
And um, focus buds are, are smart earbuds that have uh, embedded EEG electrodes that provide neurofeedback. So these are just some examples of um, companies that are using uh, technologies to help with employee burnout, specifically around uh, focus and alertness. Um, but we're still seeing many, uh, you know, many opportunities to, to take this even further, uh, to monitor uh, drowsiness, fatigue, um, while there's still opportunities to improve how, how these things are measured. Um, we think that there's still many ways that, uh, to find new use cases that combine these technologies such as AI and EEG in the workplace. So in addition to those uh, two specific examples that I, I mentioned, uh, innovation opportunities, loneliness and burnout uh, that were highlighted during COVID, um, we really think that there are many new ways that we can apply technology in the domain of emotional well-being and mental health. And uh, some of the questions that I put out there uh, to, fill, to highlight some of the gaps and opportunities first are that um, many solutions today are really one size fits all. So we're seeing a lot of apps that are creating general content for the masses, um, products that really don't, um, don't personalize or customize uh, the product experience to individual user needs or uh, lifestyle. And so um, the question is how can we you know, tailor experiences better going forward and make them more meaningful for each individual user? Uh, another gap and opportunity that we see is around um, finding more uh, products or technologies that are grounded scientifically. So many of the uh, first generation products that are coming out in the emotional well-being domain still lack the significant scientific grounding and they haven't, fo they haven't proven um, that they have uh, a real effect, a meaningful effect on people. So we're looking for, um, for deeper innovation and in that yeah, in that aspect. And finally, um, consumer experiences are still not where they could be. So um, we think that a lot of the products today are still not engaging or seamless enough uh, to get people to truly adopt new habits or to change existing ones. So how can we think of new ways to create consumer experiences and I'm sure mixed reality will also um, significantly contribute here. How can we think of new ways to create um, delightful consumer experiences that will really help people um, create and uh, keep these, these new habits? Um, so I'm towards the end of my talk. Um, we're really excited about this space and we really, um, you know, see the conversation and demand around innovation for emotional well-being at an all-time high. Um, we think that there's never been a better time for startups to enter this space and to help, you know, millions of people around the world uh, live more joyfully. Uh, we're here to uh, partner with, uh, with entrepreneurs uh, in this space, whether uh, they already have a company or whether they're just thinking about uh, an idea or a technology or whether they're doing some interesting uh, research or technology development in academia. Uh, we're very excited to, you know, meet people around the world who are uh, finding new ways to leverage technology and human understanding uh, to improve people's emotional well-being. So that's what we're all about, and I'm excited to uh, uh, open it up for questions. Thank you.